In this lesson, we're going to learn about the area under a curve, and this is continuing the topic of integration. So, I want you to see if you can find the shaded area shown. So, you might want to pause the video for um, a few seconds, just to maybe think about this. Um, so, we can see that there's the curve here, y equals x squared, and we can see there's a straight line here at x equals 1. Um, and obviously we've got the straight line of the x-axis here, so how could you find that shaded area? So have a think about that for a moment. Okay, welcome back folks. So you might have you might have thought about various things here, um, and if we were in the class just now we would have a good debate around how we could do this. Um, so I suppose one of the ways might be to introduce um, a straight line. You can see that it gives us a triangle, but you can hopefully also see that there's this space here, um, which isn't part of the tri isn't actually part of the shaded area, but it's part of the triangle. So it wouldn't be the most accurate method. So we can discard that. Another method might be to use a series of rectangles. Um, but again, you can see that there's this error here um, because the area of the rectangles is actually greater than the area, the shaded area shown. We could put the rectangles underneath the curve, like this. But again, there's some of the area now not being included. Um, so we, we need a more accurate way of being able to find the area underneath a curve. And integration can be used to find those accurate areas and volumes. And in higher, though, we will concentrate on finding areas between curves and the x-axis and between curves and curves. So if we look back to this example that we had, um, so we've got the curve y equals x squared, and you can see the shaded area is between 0 and 1 on the x-axis. So actually what we can do here is we can integrate between 0 and 1, those are our limits, x squared with respect to x. Now if we do that, we, we can see we've got a definite integral here, but the definite integral is defined by the information in the graph. So integrating, we get x cubed over 3, and our limits, remember, were 0 and 1. So we substitute 1 in firstly, and then we subtract the substitution of 0. So we've got 1 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. That gives us 1 third minus 0, which is 1 third. So that means this space here, this shaded area, is 1 third, and we normally measure in square units. So we need our units in there as well. So, in general, folks, if we've got just any curve, y equals f of x, and we've got um, values in the x-axis, a and b, so x equals a and x equals b, in general, we can then find the area enclosed by that curve and the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b by using the integral between a and b of f of x with respect to x. So integration is good because it provides that really accurate way of finding the area underneath curves, which otherwise would prove quite difficult to be accurate. So let's take a look at an example here. We've got the graph of y equals x squared minus 4x is shown below, and we want to calculate the shaded area. Okay, so you can see that the shaded area lies between 4 and 5 on the x-axis, so when I'm setting up my integration here, I know that those uh, that's going to be my limits. So I've got the integral between 4 and 5 of the curve that I'm given, x squared minus 4x, with respect to x. So integrating will give me x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2, and my limits were 4 and 5. So firstly, I'm going to substitute in 5, but I'm also going to, before I forget, simplify this fraction first. I've got 4x squared over 2, that gives me 2x squared here. So make sure you do that. So substituting in 5 this time, I've got 5 cubed over 3 minus 2 times 5 squared, and then I'm subtracting that same expression with 4 substituted in. So 4 cubed over 3 minus 2 times 4 squared. Um, in the first bracket, I get 125 thirds minus 50, and the second bracket, 64 thirds minus 32. Now it's up to you how you now um, manipulate this numerical expression. Um, you might decide to evaluate each bracket um, on its own 
and then carry out the subtraction. Or you might decide um, to deal with the thirds together and then deal with the whole numbers. It's entirely up to you. You should be getting the same answer if you're dealing with it correct numerically. So I am going to expand this bracket, the second bracket, I'm multiplying by neg negative 1. So I get 125 thirds minus 50 minus 64 thirds plus 32. And subtracting the 64 thirds from 125 thirds give me 61 thirds. And negative 50 plus 32 is negative 18. I can then express my 18 in terms of thirds to make life a bit easier here. So that's 54 thirds. And you can see my final answer then will be 7 thirds square units. So before example two, just now would be a good time to pause the video and take this one down in your notes, please. Okay, welcome back, folks. And we'll have a look at example two now. We want to find the area enclosed by the graph of y equals negative x squared plus 5x minus 6 and the x-axis. So we can see that shaded area there. Um, that's the area we're being asked to find between the curve and the x-axis. And we can see that we have um, 2 and 3 on the x-axis. That's where... The curve is intersecting in the x-axis here, um, so those will provide that provides us with our limits for integration. So we've got the integral between 2 and 3 of negative x squared plus 5x minus 6, and we're integrating with respect to x. So we've got negative x cubed over 3 plus 5x squared over 2 minus 6x, and then substituting 3 in, and substituting 2 in, and we need to find the difference between those. So, in our first bracket, we get negative 27 thirds plus 42 halves minus 18, and we're subtracting negative 8 thirds plus 20 halves minus 12. Now, obviously, it's up to you at this stage what you do. Um, you might notice that negative 27 thirds is negative 9 and you might decide to evaluate that at that point um, to, to have it as a whole number or you can deal with the thirds and then you can deal with your halves it's again it's entirely up to you how you manipulate this numerical expression um, so I know in my second bracket here instead of 20 halves I've got 10 and I'm then dealing with my thirds so negative 27 thirds plus 8 thirds gives me negative 19 thirds 45 halves, I've not got any other halves now, so I've still got my 45 halves. I've got negative 18 minus 10 plus 12, and that gives me negative 16. And then I can express all of those in terms of 6, um, so I can get a common denominator. Now, you might have a calculator for this, and that's absolutely fine, um, but you need to be aware how to do all of this without a calculator as well. So your fraction work here needs to be tipped up as well. So, 19 thirds, or negative 19 thirds rather, as 6 is negative 38 sixths, 45 halves as a 6, and 6 is 135 sixths, and 16 in terms of 6 is 96. So, altogether, we have 1 6 square units, and that is our final answer. So, just now would be a good time to pause the video, folks, before the screen goes blank, and take this example down in your notes before trying the assigned exercise for today.